Good morning, everybody. What did you when is time? We are so glad you're joining us today. We are a movement of truth, love, and community. We're continuing our next series called Faith, Hope, and Love at Home. So grab your coffee and your Bible. We'll get started in just a moment. We would love to hear from you, so please interact with us in the comments below. So, from my family to yours, we love you, we're praying for you, and we're so glad that you're joining us together for the service today. God bless. Faith, hope, love, at, at home. home! Faith, hope, and love. At home. Faith, hope, and love. 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 Well, good morning. What an awesome moment for us again. Grace, I got some dark roast coffee for you right here. So good. <laughs> and uh, we're going to get our praise on, have some time of worship. Uh, Jake has written a song kind of burst out of this virus season called I Trust You. I don't know about you, but last uh, time we heard this was on top of the rooftop overlooking Pittsburgh, and this song has not left me. I've kind of got this on repeat. Love you, Jake. Thanks for your leadership, your voice in this season. Uh, let's worship Jesus together. Let's trust in him, and let's get ready for a word about love, faith, hope, and love. Let's do this. As we trust you, Yes. 
set a place at the table Surrounded by enemies You're steadfast and without worry In the midst of the raging sea You've never been without trouble But you've never been without Circumstances they change, Jesus, you stay the same. Open my eyes to see, I can trust you. I can trust you. And when it is hard to, I can trust.
and every breath in our free my heart cries is I'm sing over you my worthy king king to yes so let it rise I can sense my whole life a fragrance every eyes here broken at your feet and every breath As we have worshiped Jesus, um, just thinking about the Faith, Hope, and Love series and uh, thinking about just all that God has done. Um, I don't know about you guys here today, you watching with us online today, I'm thankful. If, if you're thankful online with us today, you're watching live, hit a bunch of hearts right now. Hit a bunch of like buttons right now. Share this with as many people as you can right now. Let's just praise Jesus and, and let's thank him for two things. I want to thank him, first of all, for his love. Um, I, want, I want to thank him for the, the demonstration of his love in that while we were still sinners, he died for us. He loved us so much. God so loves the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him shall not perish. And so if, if you today um, don't know this, Jesus loves you. He loves you so much. And, and we at Vintage Church, we are overwhelmed by the love of Jesus. But I wanna, I wanna be thankful to the Lord for another thing. I wanna be thankful for the way in which our church has loved. Now, we know we can only love because Christ first loved us. But I am so stinking proud of you, our church family, who has stepped up in so many different ways to truly love God and love people. I don't know about y'all. So hit a bunch of hearts right now if you agree with me. Uh, hit a whole bunch of like buttons. Like, look, God is on the move. And uh, when I think about this, I think about Paul's relationship um, to all the different churches and um, that he planted, churches that he was partnered with. In 1 Thessalonians um, chapter 1, verse 2, it says this. Paul says, we give thanks to God. <laughs> All right, so he's pretty thankful at this moment. He's as thankful as we are in this moment. We give thanks to God always for all of you constantly mentioning you in our prayers. So many of you have reached out to me and said, I'm praying for you, Pastor Rob. I hope I've been a blessing praying for you. Man, what an amazing thing to pray for each other. And so Paul here is so thankful for the church and, and the prayers, not only his prayers for them, their prayers for him, but check this. It says, remembering before our God and Father, this is what they're thankful for. This is what Paul's thankful for. Remembering before our God and Father, your work of faith. Everybody say faith. faith. See, it's right here. We can't avoid it. Your work of faith. And then check this. And labor of love. Everybody say love. All right, this is a little out of order this week. I don't know what Paul was thinking. He didn't uh, stick with our sermon series here. But it's, it's faith, love, and then he mentions hope. Check this. He says, and your steadfastness of hope. Everybody say hope. So over and over, we see these things, faith, hope, love. Paul kind of messed things up here, faith, love, hope, but nonetheless, same three. And this is our focus. We're talking about love today, and, and Paul's thankful for the work of faith, the labor of love, the steadfastness of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. Not theirs, the Lord's faith, hope, and love in and through them. Um, 1 Corinthians, uh, let's go back to where we started this journey together. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 is a chapter that's all about spiritual gifts. I like talking about spiritual gifts in this way. This is how God has empowered us to love people. This is how God has empowered us to, to mobilize and to be his mission of love to God and to people, which is fulfilling the two 
greatest things that we can fulfill as the church, love God and love people. And in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, it talks about all this, like serving and everything. My favorite verse in 1 Corinthians 12 is verse seven. It says, to each is given the manifestation of the Holy Spirit for the common good, all right? There are no gift-less children of God. All of us have been equipped to love. And, and so some amazing happens. After Paul writes 1 Corinthians 12, there's 1 Corinthians 13. And we've probably heard 1 Corinthians 13 at a wedding before or whatever else, but it's all about love. Paul is reminding the church that as we go out to serve, as we go out to do these amazing things, it needs to be soaked and saturated in the love of Jesus. Now, something amazing happens in chapter 14. In chapter 14, verse 1, before Paul begins to talk about spiritual gifts again, check it out. He's going to go and talk about prophecy and speaking in tongues. He says one more time, pursue love. <laughs> pursue love. I, I believe that God wants to, through this crisis in this season, empower and equip his church to love. And, and the love, when we talk about love God and love people, the love is not just a fellowship kind of love. Fellowship kind of love is loving people who are already a part of your family. Fellowship is, is loving people who are already in your circles. We want to practice hospitality love. Hospitality love. And as we go into another interview, having the stories of faith and hope been awesome, the Wiltons and the Breeze, and this week we have a special guest as well. Annabeth and I had the privilege this past week of interviewing Kevin and Lynette Ezell. Um, this is an incredible family with an incredible passion for foster care and adoption. In their own home, they've welcomed kids. They're leading a movement across North America. We partner with the North American Mission Board and Send Network, and we just love Kevin and Lynette so much. Man, they've been such a blessing to us, such an encouragement. I think you're gonna be blessed as we talk about how we are in our homes to model love. Man, check out this video as we get this uh, going together. All right, well, welcome to another week of Faith, Hope, and Love at Home. This has been an incredible series as we've seen God uh, give incredible encouragement to homes as we are in this season, uh, leaning upon Jesus, abiding in Jesus. And Annabeth and I are so excited to welcome our special guests today, Kevin and Lynette Ezell who have been an encouragement to us like you wouldn't believe as we took the leap of faith from warm, sunny, yet muggy New Orleans up <laughs> to Pittsburgh where it's still snowing in late April. I mean, it's unbelievable, uh, but we love it. I'll never forget, just before we get into too deeper, I'll never forget as we started to pray about Pittsburgh um, and coming up to Pittsburgh, we honestly could not have been sold more about Pittsburgh than Kevin and Lynette Ezell that love this city, that brag about this city, uh, and that are huge, huge supporters of all that we're doing through Vintage Church and the Send Network. So welcome. So glad that you guys are here with us today. Thanks for having us. Hey, honored to be here. So let's, uh, let's walk through some questions and, and talk through some things. We want to get to know you guys and and hopefully, as uh, we walk through these questions, this will be a time of encouragement to a lot of people. So let's start out, Lynette. Can you share your side of the story of how you and Kevin met? Yeah, we need your side of the story. <laughs> oh, I don't know if you want to hear my side, but we, uh, I was a freshman in college, and Kevin was already at Union University. He was on a tennis scholarship. And uh, I'll just be real honest. Um, <laughs> I was... Uh, meeting people at Union and he walked through with a tennis racket under his arm and those dark beautiful tennis legs and my heart just flip flopped and oh. that, that's what yeah. <laughs> and then I just began to talk with him and realize um I mean we were young when we met but I, I you know I realized he just he just really was a solid guy loved the Lord and had lived for Jesus all through high school and man I just was so drawn to that and I've never I've never really met anyone like that before <laughs> well, but the truth of the matter is, we, 
we were actually the reason that Lionel Richie wrote the song once, twice, three times a late. So yeah. it took me several times to convince her that it was God's will. So she, she uh, pushed me aside several times. I love it. I love it. Hey, one of the things I love about your family, uh, especially I've had the privilege of getting to travel and uh, be a part of things that you've spoken at and I've had to speak at. Obviously, our church knows that you serve as the president of the North American Mission Board and uh, involved in a lot of things, but I always love. Every time I go anywhere and hear you speak, it's first. I'm going to talk about my family and uh, all the different parts of our family. I love hearing you share that. Can you just share with us a little bit about your family and uh, share with us, uh, you know, all the, the dynamics with that with kids and grandkids now? Sure, sure. We have, we have six kids. Uh, we have two older daughters who are both married, and each of them have three uh, children, which make up our six grandkids. And then we have a son that's out in California, in Los Angeles. He's on the staff at the athletic department at the California Baptist. And then our son, JM, is working for a missions agency, and their training center is in Maui. And so uh, he's having a tough time there. And, and, uh, uh, and then we have our two younger daughters, our senior and sophomore. But uh, JM and Libby and Micah, we, we adopted. JM's from Philippines, Libby's from China, and Michael is from Ethiopia. And so my, my line I always say is, you know, we have six kids from four different countries. You know, when we watch the Olympics, we win. We you know, win. Yeah. I love it. I love That's it. Awesome. So tell us a little bit um, in your role as president of North American Mission Board. I know as the Sin City missionary uh, working here in Pittsburgh. I get to see you every week with our boot camp and updates and all that. I'm sure you guys in this kind of corona season, coronavirus season, uh, you've probably received some pretty cool stories of, of just faith, hope, and love of our missionaries serving. What, what are some of your favorite stories, e either one of you, that you've heard as people are, are just making it day by day in this season? Sure. You want to share? Go ahead. You have a great Well, meeting. I have, uh, obviously, some of our best, the one I brag about is in Pittsburgh, what you guys have done through Center Relief. I, I talk about, I sound like I'm blowing smoke because I'm on your podcast. <laughs> <laughs> but that really is uh, uh, what you guys, to do whatever it takes to meet the needs and change lives of people. One of the fun stories I, 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 I love also sharing is, is a pastor. He's a bivocational pastor. He's about 70 years old in Kentucky. And, and he pastors this bivocational church that runs about 25. And, and uh, obviously, they couldn't have church. And he was almost against social media in a pious kind of a way. And, and his granddaughter said, Papa, you need to do Facebook Live. You need to preach on Facebook Live. And he says, oh, my people aren't on that. She says, no, no, Papa, you really need to. He, she showed him how to do it. And, and so his first Sunday, he preached on Facebook Live. And he had over 70 people show up. Come on. Wow. He's like, Where's this been all my life? And the beautiful thing I love about, you know, the challenge, we all hate this virus, and, and all, but it has catapulted people really 5, 10, 15, 20 years down the road of things that they otherwise never would have been stretched yeah. to do. And so, you know, there, there are some bright spots in the midst of an incredible challenge that we've seen church after church. I mean, thousands of churches have figured out that you could actually give online now. I mean, it's amazing. <laughs> and so, you would be surprised how many churches out there still prefer the eight track, all right? Yeah. So we're, we're really upgrading fast because they're happy. Yeah. So much creativity, I think, you're seeing come out of people that may have not had a chance to be creative. In other exactly. Areas, you know? Yeah, you, you want to share a little bit, like even what our neighborhood did with challenging, you know, everybody's going on walks just to survive. Do you want to share a little bit about what even's going on in our neighborhood? Yeah, we um, reached out to a couple of families that we know are um, in the healthcare industry and just made cookies one night and dropped it off at their door. And uh, my, I told my son, Burke, I said, we're just going to, we're not going to like wait for them to come to the door. We're just going to drop them off. He goes, oh, ding dong and dash. And I said, well, <laughs> is that what you call it? So he said, yeah, that's what our friends do. That's what we do. I said, well, great. Now, now I know what you've been doing around the neighborhood. So. Um, That's great. Did that for some of our um, neighbors that we know are doctors and nurses and so just yeah, and, and it's kind of been super fun like you know everybody is zoomed out and 
we've got all these meetings and there's overkill of news. I had one neighbor uh, that had never really experienced our church in Pittsburgh, but told me this was their line. Uh, they told me that they watched our Easter service because they were tired of Netflix. And uh, I, don't, I don't think we're ever going to have that season again where people are going to church instead of Netflix, but it's alive now. And I know that we've been so encouraged. Are there any other stories that, that you guys could think of just in terms of encouragement, inspiration around the country? Well, it's just somewhat similar to what you, you said. I mean, we, we met more of our neighbors that's in the right. last, you know, three weeks than we've met in the last three years. I mean, that's on me. Yeah. I travel so much, it's just kind of hard, but it's just a amazing the the doors that he he opens you know and and the fact that just getting to spend so much family time right you get so busy with so many things it, it's just uh it reminds me of that acts 15 passage where you know paul and barnabas were were uh talking right before they got in a fight and went their own separate ways but yeah. they were saying let's go back and visit all the new believers let's go back and visit all the new churches and and what i draw from that is it's, it's just giving us a time to pause you go back and reflect on all that God's done, how it's faithfulness, what he has done, and what he is doing, instead of always being focused on the next thing. Um, and so I've really tried to make this kind of an Acts 15 time to go back and reflect on things and do the deep dive on what he has done. It's really, really encouraging. Um, not just from Pittsburgh to Boston, to New Mexico, California. It's just been amazing to see people in their own, as, as Annabeth said, creativity coming up with, uh, how to reach people in such a, a unique time. Well, we found too in our neighborhood, um, you know, we've got senior adults that they're afraid of COVID. Mm. Some have cancer, some have heart issues. I mean, right around us and just little packaged teas. I mean, how simple is that? I didn't even bake cookies. Yeah. And definitely, you know, little flavored teas. But I found at the same time, they're more open to the gospel because they're discouraged and on that little package of tea the girls and i could write you know he has a plan for you the lord sees you he cares and just a sweet scripture and they really appreciate it and i kind of feel like they're more open right now they they want someone to know that okay they want to know that someone sees them yeah. because some of them feel so incredibly isolated i mean i know i would even our own moms are both widows and so we're making sure we stay in kind you know just our facetime and keeping them involved just watching us go around the, you know, through the day. But especially with people who are shut in like that during this time, who are normally out and doing things yeah. and really don't have, don't really sit and can't, you know, don't get to share with them as open, as openly as you'd like to. Now I'm finding that you kind of can. Yeah. 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 It's incredible. You know, we were in New Orleans pre and post Katrina and the doors that opened in post Katrina, just because we had physically served, um, were just unbelievable. I mean, our church, Vintage Church New Orleans, which we love, that we had the privilege of planting, and that's part of the Send Network, Send New Orleans down there, that, that's doing so great. Um, it was birthed out of meeting needs and changing lives. And so here's how I kind of want to segment over, you know, push over to, to talk. So NAM, North American Mission Board, uh, for those who don't know, is church planting under Send Network. And uh, Kevin's, you know, watching me do this, plant churches everywhere for everyone. And that's what we're doing. And then there's Send Relief, which is all about meeting needs, building relationships and changing lives. And kind of what makes both of them tick being that this is all about the gospel is evangelism. And I love being a part of all of those aspects of it. In Pittsburgh, um, there's a bunch of different pillars under Send Relief of how we meet needs and change lives. In Pittsburgh, we're really focused on poverty uh, with our Send Relief Center. And uh, this coming Tuesday, we're gonna have another incredible time uh, with our Pittsburgh Food Bank and continuing to serve our community meals. Uh, we're so thankful to be a part of that. I know that your family specifically has an incredible passion with foster care and adoption. And uh, Lynette, would you share with us a little bit about that? This Sunday for us at Vintage, we're we're really focusing in on send relief and celebrating a number of things that we're a part of together. Uh, I'd love to, to introduce our church to this and even share how we can get involved. Absolutely. You know, we have found that when um, someone, a family in your church comes alongside a foster family, they just thrive. The child kind of is able to keep up with, you know, just stay in that one placement. So I'll, 
when we moved to Alpharetta, while, you know, this is about seven years ago, we've been here a couple of years, I just began to see the need. I knew adoption, but foster care I didn't know a lot about. So I just, I just went straight to the head gal in, in a certain region of our state, 15,000 kids in the system in our state, as well as in uh, Pennsylvania as well. Mm -hmm. That's the last set that I saw for you guys. But mm -hmm. I just went to her and said, how can we help? And before I went to her, and she's not a believer, but before I went to her, I decided in my heart, I'm going to do what she asked us to do through my local church. Mm -hmm. And that's what we did. And, you know, she, they needed clothing, that sort of thing. Um, and she just leaned across the table and she went, wait a minute, can I, Lynette, can I just tell you something? This God and Jesus and everything you guys talk about, the only time these kids in care hear the name of Jesus is when someone's swearing at them. They don't have a clue who he is. Man, they just, mm. they just turned my life on a dime. Yeah. And so we started, um, I just thought, okay, how can we, like you're doing food and that sort of thing there in, in, in Pittsburgh, but just to have to restore their dignity. So these kids, they couldn't even go to school with what they had on. They left their home so quickly. They were so uh, unkept. They were just incredibly neglected. I mean, it's every day, you know, every five minutes of every day. And so we just started restoring dignity, did, did a brand new duffel, brand new clothing, a copy of God's word, a note in there that says, we love you, we see you. And just last week, we had 30 kids that just didn't get clothes. And so the girls and I are scrambling you know, we're up there, we have a little storage unit that someone lets us have for free in the back of this uh, foster center. And we just go up there and go deliver them to their door. And, you know, just let the foster family know we see you. We know you took extra placements that you didn't really, didn't really have room for right now because they're bending some of the rules so kids can be in homes uh, through COVID. And the church has not been afraid. They've not been afraid of this, and they have stepped up and said, "Yes, we will help shoulder this. We'll help shoulder your shoulder your your grief and your loss and your trauma, and we're going to love you as Jesus would love you. And here are some new things that are yours forever." And they just start walking them through. Jesus loves you, and and we've just seen it work better in through the church, through yeah. the local church. Yeah. yeah. Now that's incredible for a, a family that's out there that's that's considering taking steps towards foster care and adoption what are what are some things that, that you guys just encourage them in and uh as, as they you know are praying about taking that leap to 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 love on the the focus of today faith hope and love and you've modeled this within your own home and obviously leading churches and other homes what are, what are some encouragements that you would share to them well i would just go meet a foster family like go find one just get up and take one step or if god's God's moving in your heart about adoption. Just take one step, just call and get a packet. And so I, I just always encourage everyone, if God is just wrestling in your heart about this, and you know that the Holy Spirit's moving in your heart, it's time to do something, just take one step and then reach out. You know, listen to our podcast or just reach out, email me or email some relief and say, what do I need to do to take the first step? But it could be just go meet a foster family and support them and make, people that are doing foster care and adoption, uh, a part of your community. Just get to know them and you will learn volumes. It's, you know, the thing you have, not everybody's cut out to do it. That's right. So we don't put the guilt on, everybody needs to adopt, you don't. Not everybody needs to adopt three. You know, no. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> foster care is not for, for everybody, but, but just like Annabeth, Annabeth was saying about the, doing the, the ding dong and dash for the medical work. The same type of thing you can do for foster families. That's right. So you may not be the one to actually be the foster families. I'm not saying just leave cookies. You can do gift cards. And I mean, she's constantly saying, hey, we need a twin mattress for a family. We need this. <laughs> and yeah. you can just go and get, you know, gift cards and give to people and meet needs. And so every person can be involved. The unique thing about Sin Relief with the five different pillars that we have this uh, foster care is the only one on there that actually is something that can be solved. If yeah. the church hard to get rid of all the poverty, yeah. hard to get rid of all the sex trafficking and all, but the foster, there is a certain number of kids in a system mm -hmm. and there are churches that have bonded together who have actually eradicated foster care in their counties. Wow. Like they're all taken care of. Wow. And, uh, and so that's what's really, it's one of the achievable pillars uh, foster care, we can make a difference yeah. and, and are. 
and we just have to everybody get involved. There's more. If every church took, you know, at least one, I mean, we practically do away with foster care. Yeah, we have families waiting for children other than children waiting for families. And I always uh -huh. think, like, the perfect world would be when a child was just removed from their home, everything they know, like they lose their school, they lose their familiar Walmart, they lose their neighborhood friends, you know, whatever. You know, think about all that your kids are familiar with. They yeah. lose all of that. But in their heart, if they knew it's going to be okay, because those Jesus people are going to come take care of me. I know. I've seen them do it. You know, if they knew, those Jesus people are coming, they're going to take care of us. That's, that's my goal. Yeah. That's I awesome. love it. I love it. Well, as we close, is there anything else um, that either of you would like to share um, just with thinking of families in homes right now in and around Pittsburgh um, and all of our North American cities? Um, just anything, any words of wisdom, any words of hope or faith or love that you want to share? How, we how do we cut our hair, yeah. Lynette? Like, how do we get our hair cut? Like important things, you know? Yeah, I got nothing on the haircut. So. <laughs> no, I mean, just, you, you know, it is what it is. We got to make the very most of it. That's right. You can sit around and complain about it and all the, but uh, you just got to make the very best of it. Mm -hmm. And we have it for a reason. And and uh, the, I just think I just encourage you know the, uh, in Colossians is whatever you do, uh, work at it with all your heart. You're working for the Lord, not for man. That means when you've got a full slate of things to do, or like tomorrow when basically there's nothing but a lot of Zoom calls, you know, and you just, you, it is, it's, it's what God's put in front of you, and we're to make the very most of it. Yeah, and just, you know, I always go back to Titus, and uh, Paul was telling the church, they had incre incredible poverty, the early church. They were facing uh, persecution from the government. They had nothing. And at the same time, he was, he told the early church, be prepared, no matter what happens to meet urgent needs, mm -hmm. always be prepared. Right. And, I, and I, I think this is a great time to do that. We were dropping off food at our local church the other day. They were asking for canned goods and I had my kids, you know, like yeah. you were having a trip. It's a perfect time. You have the kids at home. They're doing their schoolwork. They finish kind of early. Let them do a lot of, it, you know, have them be a part of that. Yeah. And just, and just remember finally that God is faithful. Yeah. yeah. And Oreo. <laughs> and all the coffee he's eating Oreos. <laughs> oh, there's no doubt. There's no doubt. Well, listen, we want to say thank you so much uh, for joining us today. Uh, but we also want to say, Annabeth and I want to say thank you for loving us. Uh, there have been so many check ins and, hey, how's it going? And I always try and, especially Kevin, if we're texting or whatever, I'm trying to say, you know, here's what we're doing and all that. He's like, you're always like, no, no, stop. How's Annabeth? How are the kids? You know, what's going on? And so your love for us, belief in us, um, and all of the SIN network. I know I'm speaking on behalf of, of missionaries all over North America. We love you. Uh, thank you for the love you have that you model at home uh, for others and for the world. And we're inspired by you. And this has been a great, great time of encouragement. So thanks so much. Thank you. Thank Good you. to see you guys. Appreciate you guys. How great was it to have Kevin and Lynette Ezell join us for worship today at Vintage Church. We're so thankful for all that God's doing through the Send Network with planting churches everywhere for everyone. And then of course our Send Relief Partnership where we're meeting needs, building relationships and changing lives. Behind me you can see a ton of activity uh, this is Tuesday. We're uh, about to crank up our Pittsburgh Food Bank monthly outreach with the Pittsburgh Food Bank here. And so we wanted to show you a little bit of what God's doing here as we're meeting needs, building relationships, and changing lives. Y'all check out this video.
Your generous giving is changing lives here in Pittsburgh. And I want to say thank you for your continued faithfulness through this coronavirus season. As you've seen today, uh, through your generous giving, you are equipping us to be able to meet needs, build relationships, and change lives. And I just want to say thank you for not only the way in which you're giving of your time and your talent, so many of our faithful volunteers are coming out to serve like they have today through our uh, Pittsburgh Food Bank, um, as we're scattering throughout homes to engage our neighborhood and our neighbors, uh, but you're also giving through your finances. Continue to be faithful. You'll see some links on the screen where you can give online or you can give through our mailing address. Uh, let's continue to be faithful so that we can uh, pour out the love of Jesus throughout our church and into our city and world. I also wanna share this with you. Today, if you, as you worshiped with us online, trusted in Jesus for the first time in your life, confessing your sin, putting your faith and trust in Him, we wanna celebrate with you and we wanna hear from you today. And so you'll see another link there. Please reach out to us. We'd love to walk with you. We'd love to share with you, give you some resources on how you can begin this incredible journey. And I hope in the not too distant future, we'll be able to celebrate a baptism together. Listen, as we keep plowing forward in this season, stay connected with us online, on our Facebook group, on social media, reach out to us. We're here for you. This is truly a movement of truth, love, and community. Can't wait to see you next week.